We've come to Northern France with the help of our friends at Shimano to see how the teams prepare for this savage one day race. In particular, we're going to be focusing on the preparations of Bora Hansgrohe as they'll be wanting to replicate the success of their star rider Peter Sagan who won last year. Paris-Roubaix is the biggest and best one day race of the season and it's one of the few races where riders routinely change and modify their bikes and equipment. Why? Well, it's because of these. The cobbles. There's 54 kilometres of these bad boys strewn throughout the 257 kilometre course and they take a massive toll on the riders and their equipment. Many teams use special bikes for Roubaix in a bid to dampen the pave. Sagan's team is no exception, they're using the new specialised Roubaix. The cool thing about this is it actually has suspension in the form of this future shock and that's intended to soften the cobbles as much as possible. And for 2019, it also has a lockout so that it can be turned off to make the bike stiffer and more efficient when it's not needed. But to give you an idea of just how brutal this race is, they even have to modify the cars for Paris-Roubaix. So this is one of the Bora team cars and it actually has a special uh, plate fitted underneath it to stop the cobbles damaging the underside of the car. <laughs> it's pretty mental. A particularly geeky modification the riders make is to change their 39 tooth inner chain ring to a 42 or 44. And Shimano specifically supplies this chain set to the riders. I'm not exactly sure why, and I've not seen it for sale before, so I'm going to ask Bert, who's from Shimano, to explain a bit more about it. I'm here with Bert Rusums from Shimano. Shimano sponsors seven World Tour teams that take part in Paris-Roubaix, but I'm really interested to hear about how Shimano supports those teams for, well, Paris-Roubaix, because it's so demanding on, on the mm -hmm. equipment. Yeah, well, our main uh, support is uh, when we bring those special uh, chain rings, those special gears the guys want to use in, in Paris-Roubaix, mainly that 53 uh, that can be combined with a, with a 44 in a chain ring. That 44 in a chain ring is bigger than what you standard can run as your biggest in a chain ring, and yeah. that is a 39 teeth. And it's not, com it's not, com so the, th the 5339 is the standard chain set that, that is the standard I can chain buy set. and you can buy in the shops, but yes. why can't we get the, the 5342 uh, that they're using and why do they use a 5342? Yeah, for sure they use a 42 or the 44 because they want to go uh, over those cobbled sections with a pretty high speed, but try to save the legs often when they have uh, either a headwind or when it's a cobbled section that is more or less a false flat. Um, also, if you would look at your gear chart, then you would see that with a 5344 setup with an 1128 or 1130 cassette, you have a lot of gears that double up. So from a consumer point of view, when you ride a double chain ring in the front and 11 sprockets in the rear, you want to have as many possibilities uh, as, that, as you can have which yeah. for these pro riders, for a particular race like Paris-Roubaix, for them it's not needed. They yeah. want to go high speed, full gas over those cobbles. They don't want to have a nice spread of gears because they also need to tackle the special climbs or whatever. And so how does it how does it not drop it then? What's the, yeah, what's we, the difference? We have a uh, build up, so an extra layer uh, on the inside of your outer chain ring that prevents the chain of getting caught in between. And this is only available to the pros? This is only available to the pros. This is something from the sports marketing department. We provide the sponsor teams and all the teams that run Shimano. Can I, can I have one? Can you get, can you get uh, me one? We'll, we'll discuss off camera. Okay. been looking at other teams' bikes, but specifically with regards to Bora Hansgrohe, all the riders that are doing Paris-Roubaix have something in common on their bikes, and that is they've got round cross-section handlebars, not aero profile bars. A lot of these riders, including Sagan, do use an aero bar for the added aero benefit it affords most of the time, but for Roubaix, they've switched them out. And I wondered why this was, and they've said that it's because the round bar is a little bit more comfortable, it's a bit more compliant, and doesn't quite transmit as many vibrations as the aero bar. 
So anything to mitigate the, the killer vibrations of the cobbles, I guess. Something we often see at Paris-Roubaix Bay is modifications, particularly in the cockpit, with additional shifters, uh, shifter buttons, and brake levers on the, on the top. Well, we have, uh, like you see on this bike, you see those two small uh, buttons. Oh, yeah. So you can, you can shift up with one hand and shift down your gears with the other one. Uh, so uh, they resemble more or less our first generation sprint shifters, yeah. which had, was that only one tiny little button. The difference is that these one can uh, house firmware. So you can uh, play around with your settings. If you would have a, a, uh, a light set or dropper post or whatever, which can you can connect with this one, you can not only um, control shifting, but you could also do uh, control other components on your bike with them. But this for sure makes that, uh, yeah, you don't need to reposition your hands when they want to shift. So when they go over the cobbled sections, they can keep your, their hands on top of the handlebars and still shift. Something you may be wondering is that with all the, the bumps that the cobbles create, why don't the riders choose to use the Shimano RX rear mech with the clutch built into it? We actually made a video about it and it's really impressive how it works and keeps the chain tight when it's going over rough bumps. Well, I wondered this too and I asked Shimano and I also asked the team and they had a good answer. Apparently Trek, who is also a sponsored Shimano team, they tried it out last year and found that wasn't really any benefit to using it on the cobbles. It does have a benefit, but that's on rougher ground, typically gravel riding and real rough stuff. But for the cobbles, the standard Jura Ace rear mech is more than up to the job. They don't find there's any problems with dropping chains or anything like that or misshifts. In the recent past, we used to see a lot more hacks and bodgers like double wrap bar tape and gel inserts. I haven't seen any of that this year and one of the reasons is wheels and bikes are now designed to accommodate wider tyres which offer much more cushioning. On the subject of wheels, there's quite an interesting thing we can see here and that is they're very deep, they're 50s or 64s and this is quite unusual. In the past, riders tended to favour, even though carbon wheels were available, shallower depths because it was perceived that they were more comfortable. But now wheels have become optimised for wider tyres that can be offset by using the, the larger volume tyre. Now, aero matters in Roubaix. Last year was the fastest ever edition. And so having a more aerodynamic wheel can be significant. Matt Heyman famously won on an aero bike and riders are starting to realise this and take it seriously and that's why the whole team are using at least 50 millimetre deep wheels here in this edition. And it's also with aerodynamics in mind that we don't see any levers on the through axles of the disc brakes. Now, believe it or not, well, this is a leading edge, so it can actually count significantly towards the bike's aerodynamics. You can actually save a couple of watts by removing the through axle lever. And the Bora Mechanics, well, they have a crafty solution. They're actually using this, which is a drill set to a torque with an Allen key extension in the end. And they reckon, it's like kind of Formula One pit gun. <laughs> they reckon that using this, they can change wheels faster than with a standard quick release skewer. How cool is that? It's because there isn't the little notches that they have to get the wheel over. They just simply pull it in, pull it out, pull it in, done. I think that's really, really cool. But I'd love to see them do it as a race against the quick release. Maybe we should do that in a future video. You have to be a massive hard case to ride Paris-Roubaix, we know, but I think the biggest unsung heroes are the mechanics because they have to do a ridiculous amount of work, probably more work for this race than any other race because of all the specialist equipment. So for example, the wheels, they have to take all the tires off the wheels that they normally use, typically 25 millimeter tires, and replace them in the case of Bora with 30 millimeter tires. But then once that's done, they have to take those back off and put the 25s back on. And this is a really big job. It involves taking them off, removing the tub glue because they're tubulars, applying the glue, curing it, and that takes a few days for each wheel. It's a massive job. And then they've got to set up the bike. The Roubaix bikes with their suspension that uh, Bora use aren't really used in many other races throughout the year, maybe one stage of the tour. So again, they have to fully set up a whole fleet of bikes in full race mode to the specification of each rider's particulars. 
and it's not just one bike, every rider has a spare as well. So there's actually a little number on the back of Daniel Osser's bike, that two, that means it's his second bike. And well, Peter Sagan, he's got four. So you can imagine how much work it is for these guys, absolute heroes. Despite all the modifications and preparations the riders can do, there's no escaping that riding on cobbles like these on the Car 4 de Lab hurts. It hurts a bit less than it used to 30 years ago with the equipment they had back then, but it still hurts. And only the most dogged, determined, tenacious and strongest riders will ever be triumphant in a race that's such a war of attrition like Paris-Roubaix. You have to be lucky as well. It's a very unpredictable race and that's why we love it because as soon as sport becomes in any way predictable it can become boring and Paris-Roubaix is anything but that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the GCN channel and to watch more cobble related content click on the cobbles. <laughs>